Hello again! This is the second installment of the Salt and Sanctuary playthrough, and my name is Todd Parker. I'm still Fletcher. Hello. Hmm. The character's all running in when the world loads is a nice touch. Yeah, I... I don't know if that was intentional or if that's just how the loading system works, but, uh... It's lively, anyway. I pretty much was just, um... Getting back into the swing of things, because it had been a few days since I'd played when I started this recording. I didn't want to do a bunch of stuff off-screen if I could help it. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, and, and things went alright, because I'm a lot more powerful than I was when I first came here. Makes sense. They went alright for a little while, and then this guy just wrecked my wow. ship. Wow, holy god. That's kind of impressive, because that's just straight up a man becoming a pinwheel on your face. Full health to death in, like, two seconds. Well. If I'd reacted in time, I could have rolled away, but I was just kind of taken by surprise there. So you can charge spells? Uh, yes, you can charge spells, and mm -hmm. I think it increases the power maybe a little bit. It's rarely worth it, in my experience, on regular enemies with the lightning bolt, because uh, more efficient just to spam it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, I was taking no chances with uh, with getting my salt back, even though there wasn't that much of it. Eh, it still so costs. So I came down here and then got killed oh, again wow. instantly. I didn't even have a chance to roll away then. It was just... Boom. I thought I could use the invincibility frames of the stomping thing. Nope. Well, this is the start of something magical. Well, yeah, I was mad now. <laughs> <laughs> I was, uh, I was very angry and absolutely determined to get my salt back. It didn't have to be personal, but they made it personal. Well, let's see if we go for a hat trick here. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> yeah, even those guys can mess you up if you get uh if you get incautious. You had me worried that this was going to be a third round of deaths. Ah, that flying axe messed me up. Well yeah, Castlevania's taught Wow. <laughs> And this is where I said, fuck it. <laughs> yeah. Moving on, I can't spend the whole LP dying over and over again trying to get less than 500 salt back. <sighs> so let's go to where that old man told us to look for a key. Or a brand, or whatever it is we're looking for. Well, it's some sort of key. Yeah, the place is called the Village of Smiles. Um, but first I stopped to chat with this guy for a second so I could show off the descriptions of the uh, boss armor that I didn't look at last time. Mm -hmm. They're not that interesting, but we'll see in a moment. Almost bought some endless fangs there, but what I meant to do was buy the locks of hair mm -hmm. so I could uh, upgrade a little more. Doppelsoldner Barbut. Doppelsoldner. Doppelsoldner. Soldner. An O with an umlaut is like U. Uh. Soldner. Hmm. At least in German. I don't know if that's... I think that's German. You know, I'm just going to give that one German. That looks German as hell. Yeah, Doppel is double. Oh, that's an interesting set of gear for coming off the Soggy Man, whose name I have forgotten, clearly. Uh, Sodden Knight, I think. That's close enough. Yeah. The Soggy Fellow. Mortal Foes with Captain Crunch. Oh, man. I want to see this engine's version of Captain Crunch now. Hmm. Cosplay? 
So uh, this door, I don't remember. I think we could have opened it before, and you know, there, oh. there I am, like a dummy, getting hit by a big spiky log. Um, we'll see in a moment. Traps are marked by little uh, rope things on the ground, but this here is um, basically a black knight from Dark Souls. Hmm. They're tough. They don't respawn. They're hard to stun, and they're resistant to all damage. I don't die to him uh, this run, no. Well, that's a plus. I don't think I died to any of them this run, actually. Oh, neat. Yeah. Uh, you see they explode in, like, a big multicolored explosion, and he drops a bell of return. Uh, which, um, if we remember, is a homeward bone. Gotcha. Uh, this session I will be setting a stone guide down, and that will introduce a different fast travel mechanic. Hmm. This is the Village of Smiles, I think. I'm pretty sure. You are in the Village of Smiles. The uh, descriptor came up when you first walked out of the door. Oh, yeah, okay. Oh, that looked painful. Yeah, the, the wolves have like a close-up grab attack that does a bit of damage, and I nearly died there. And actually, uh, there was an arrow trap over there, and it happened to hit that barrel, which saved me. <laughs> I would have died otherwise. Um... So what you're telling me is that this is a remake of Spelunky as well. Uh, yeah. I mean, not really, but th there are arrow traps, and there are, uh, like, I don't know what they're called, but, like, spiky springboard traps, like planks that'll spring load smack up in your face as you go past them. I didn't look at the description, but that vine mesh Pelterian I just picked up as a shield. Mm -hmm. It's, I think, a tier two shield, so it's not one we will ever be using in this run. Uh, if I recall from previous runs, it has really good poison resist. Hmm. And here's a scarecrow thing that I will be checking out after I kill these enemies, so I don't get janked while I'm talking to it. Makes sense to me. The Village of Smiles has a lot more lethal drop-offs than previous areas we've been to. It's more vertical in character. Well, you know what the hell things work like now, so... I thought better of it. Hmm. Rydia says, hell no. I assume this is one of those other choices of religion you could make? Faith? I don't know. I haven't said yes yet. It's really creepy. Interesting. And he has nothing more to say. Hmm. So, yeah, that was weird. <laughs> well, let's see. And a little off-putting. That's what the arrow traps look like. They're basically just ground-mounted crossbows. Uh, and there are little string things on the ground. That is a path that I didn't go down this run. I'll be doing it next next uh, episode. Mm -hmm. I don't know why I did that just then. That was weird. Um, I did the, the jumping attack. And for some reason just launched myself forward. And then he almost killed me, so I decided, what the hell, I'll just shoot him with lightning from afar because I'm a mage. Oh yeah, I ran out of magic there. I, I had been noticing that your bar was getting a little low, yeah. Uh, and, uh, yep. So then I just finished him off real quick, and what he drops is the Conduit of Mind, which I will be checking out once I have finished off these fellows. Oh, interesting. That scarecrow is not a religion. Uh, there's also a stone leader there. The stone leader is the NPC who allows us to trade in enemy drops for rewards, like hmm. the ears and whatnot that we've been picking up. Uh, let me see here. I, I think I was checking to see if I'd picked up any armor or anything without realizing it. But we will be taking off the bandage ring because I don't care about HP that much and putting on the conduit of mind because... It increases the amount of magic we can use. 
that comes with the cost of further shortening our uh, endurance meter, but it does mean that I can go for longer before I have to... Uh, hit a shrine. Hit a shrine or use my uh, Cloth of Blessing slash file item, whatever that may be. Hmm. And I uh, nope. didn't do so good getting up into that hidden door there. Twice. Ooh. What is in here is a, I think, tier one greatsword hmm. weapon, which I guess would be good if you're one of the fighter classes. Um, How is that spelled? It is down there, and it is called the Kuremo. Okay. We're seeing a little bit of tie into some of the ethnicities we've, we could have taken. The Door Isle was one of the places that we might have been from. I think I took Coast Rock. Uh, but I don't know if it actually means anything. That that right there is a trap that's already been sprung, but that's one of the springy traps, and this is a dead end for us now. It'll be a shortcut later. Ah, uh, the name is a Roman alphabet transliteration of the Japanese word I can't pronounce this, which simply means claymore. Okay. Oh, claymore. That explains it. Claymore, claymore. I was going to say, that definitely sounded more Eastern than uh, Eastern European. Yeah. Uh, I don't remember what I was doing here with the blacksmith. I uh, wanted to uh, upgrade my wand again, maybe? Hmm. I think I was looking to see if he had anything better to sell than what we'd had so far, and he does, uh, but nothing that I can equip. Fair enough. same armor that he's been selling, the, the armor that the peasant starts with. Well, you know. So what is that diagram there to the left when you're upgrading? Uh... No idea. Oh, okay, gotcha. It was harder to tell with the wand, with the dagger there. I can see it's just a screen in front of it. All right. Yeah, I think it's just a... I thought it was some kind of web of upgrade. Got it. Yeah, not not as far as I know. I think it's just a symbol. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we've upgraded our uh, catalyst again. Nice. Uh, and we can't upgrade it again. I don't know if you saw there, but we need something called a poem of soldier, I think it was. Or a soldier's poem in order to level up more. Take oath is how we change our faith at a regular place, at a regular sanctuary. Mm -hmm. Um, I didn't do it. I don't know if there's like a thing, like some kind of problem with becoming an apostate or not. A penalty of swapping around, you mean? Yeah, I don't know if there is or not. I haven't looked into it, and I don't see a reason to change from my current faith, uh, because the items that I get are pretty good for my build. I think I went with working toward the file, or not the file, the potion upgrade, and then toward the assassin and dexterity upgrade, so I can do a little bit more damage with my whips and daggers. Makes perfect sense. And there's an arrow trap that I just tripped. If you look back there, you can see the remains of the string that triggers it. I don't think I fall for that trap again. Oh, and the scarecrow guy is gone. Creepy. Hmm. Uh, and, you know, since this thing said death ahead, uh, I figured I might as well go and promptly got my face smashed in. You know, these things happen. But you lived. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Uh, I had not gone this way in any previous run when I did this, so this part is blind. Hmm. I was just looking at the descriptions of the uh, of the new gods faction um, items there, since I don't believe we've gotten those yet. That enemy tripped a log trap on his own. Well, it's good to know you can use it against them. Also, this is interesting looking at how the faction system works. Hmm.
And there's a Black Knight who I think I didn't even bother fighting fairly. I figured, what the hell, I've got range on him, let's just zap him and then stomp his face in. Look, if it works, it works, and you got a ring out of it. Yeah, they all seem to have, um, regular major drops. I guess since they don't respawn, they're basically just especially dangerous treasure chests. Um, yeah, that ring increases our arcane defense, which I'm not interested in. Um, there's a second stone guide. I'll be setting one of them later on in this run. They're real, real good. Hmm. And, uh, even though a bottle warned me, I went ahead anyway and decided to see what was going on with this room that's clearly a boss chamber. And we got a tall, scary lady. She looks... Yeah, this place definitely has a bit more of a Japanese bend to it, especially because she reminds me of the faceless woman who I cannot recall the name of from Legend. Mm. She made quick work of me. Yeah, she's got kind of a The Ring look to her. Um, someone else will have to correct me after this because I'm not sure I'm not going to think of it during the video, but the woman who asks you if you think she's gorgeous with a cloth over her face, whatever you answer, you will then be asked, do you still think I'm pretty when she takes it off and you see she's missing a jaw? Oh. Yeah. Starts with a K, I think. Couldn't say. Yeah. I know a little bit about Japanese folklore, but not a lot about their ghosts and ghouls. I was a sucker for that kind of thing growing up. Hmm. They got some really interesting ones. Everyone does. Also, I noticed your scarecrow's gone now. Oh, yeah, yeah, I said that a little while ago. Oh. He, he has up and vanished on us, not interested in talking to me anymore. Mm-hmm. I feel like we'll probably be seeing more of him. I will neither confirm nor deny. <laughs> that, uh, that one berserker there trips that trap pretty much every time I come in here, if I remember right. Hey, that's handy. I mean, if it works, does it matter? Mm, not to me. Hmm. Oh, uh, we'll be seeing an interesting mechanic in just a bit here. Uh, but first, I decided to go ahead and... Because uh, I picked up a bottle earlier that intimated holy damage would be good against this boss, I decided I might as well equip those light vessels that I grabbed a bit earlier, um, as well as the Granado items. Mm-hmm. And, uh, uh, thinking a bit about the topography, I figured there might be a way to that area that I could see earlier, um, and that bottle confirmed it for me. There is a secret passage here. I was kind of wary of traps, but there isn't one. The wrapped link I ended up using because it's pretty, pretty cool. Increased rolling speed seems like a handy damn thing, yeah. It's nice. Later on in the run, toward the end we'll see something interesting with regard to what I said at the beginning of the last episode about their equipment weight not being a thing. Mm -hmm. It is. Hmm. Or if equipment weight isn't a thing, then, um, at the very least, your endurance makes a big difference. Well, now I'm intrigued. Yeah. Like, there, there definitely are degrees of agility... Um, depending on various factors, so it may very well be that equipment weight does affect it. Hmm. And whoever that was died very poor. Queen of Smiles, take two. Ooh, that's some decent damage. Oh yeah, that did a nice chunk to her. Um, you apparently can aim thrown items as well, as I discovered right there. 
Um, so I missed with one of them, but I hit with the second and the third. And the fourth. And the fifth. Ooh. Oh, no, that was the Granados that I was on to there. And they do decent damage, too. Yeah, I noticed that they explode a little bit after a delay. So, yeah, I figured, you know, have a nice easy time finishing her off after the items. Just use lightning on her. Be nice and cheap. Hey, if it works, it works. Yep, that's what I thought. And I rolled badly there. Interesting pattern on her sword spread. Yeah, it's randomized as far as I can tell. Ah, hmm. oh, that hurt. And I just couldn't do it. I couldn't get away in time to heal. Yikes. So all those items wasted. But notice that I did not lose any salt permanently. It just added to what she has. Yep. Mm -hmm. Bosses will absorb your salt over and over and over again, so you can feel free as long as you can make it to them intact. Interesting. To just try over and over again, and you'll get it all back if you win. Also, the ghost I was thinking of was a Kuchisaki Ona. Okay. Because, of course, I started googling Japanese ghost K-mask. So yeah, I uh, was taking no chances here getting to the boss intact, because I didn't really want to lose all that salt. I will refrain from making the obvious pun. Well, I mean, you, if we're going to start making that pun in this game, we'll be making it every time anything happens, is what I'm thinking. That's true. So, I mean, that's why I haven't made it yet. You know, once that floodgate's been opened, there's no closing it. It's true. So yeah, anytime something uh, went poorly, I just went ahead and started over. <laughs> no, that makes perfect sense. Yeah, I, I didn't really want to have things go really bad. And then enter the boss room crippled, yeah. Mm-hmm. I believe I used a few, um, red shards here and there. It's true, I've been watching you do so. They're not very effective. Oh. <laughs> that looks like it hurt. Yep, and I was just like, welp. <laughs> <laughs> Round four. Try again. Ugh. So are those little icons in the bottom corner, the cross and the salt, just like as of using that shrine, you get a bonus to those? No, I believe they're the equivalent of the icons that you get for active buffs in Dark Souls, because I've had the salt pile up since the beginning, I believe, because of my grasping ring. Gotcha. The, um, mm, the cross up, I just, mmm. What a nerd. I keep getting hit by that thing over and over again. What happens? What are my rings right now? I'm using... I'm not sure what the cross signifies. But I know it represents a buff, because the salt up represents my increased salt gain. Alright. Speaking of increased salt gain, insert obvious pun... Getting a little tired of running to this boss by this point. And he just did not want to be hit by me. Well, that makes sense. I don't want to be hit by people either. And I'm not even a ghost made of sights. Funny story. That dodge there was not an expertly timed dodge because I knew the thing was coming. I completely forgot that it was there again and just happened to roll oh my God. and dodged it. <laughs> Believe it or not. <laughs> uh, I'm going to take your word on that one. I mean, I'm not bragging. I know. 
No, I'm pretty sure that is the opposite of a brag. Random dodge, dumb luck. If it works, I guess. I'm trying to remember if this is the time that I beat uh, the Queen of Smiles finally. I think it is. Uh... Um, in incidentally, when I destroy those crossbow traps, you see, I don't get any salt. They're not living creatures, but I, uh, I do get a little bit of gold. I did notice that. Not enough to be worth doing it, which is why I didn't keep doing it, but there you are. Hmm. Yeah, you pretty much have to use two red shards for it to be worthwhile. And I didn't have any items to use this time, so I was just like, fuck it, spam lightning again and again and again. Yeah. So in terms of a damage race, would not... I just noticed something. That you just got yourself back for taking her down a third of your life? A third of her life, yeah. Oh, well, yeah. Yeah, that's what those bars have been meaning. That's why you got the stuff back and then lost it again. That's it. Okay. Yeah, yeah if you were to die to her immediately, you would not get to keep your stuff. Okay. I ran out of MP there, so I used my... uh spiced mead or whatever that item is and got some of it but not all of it back. Makes sense. And uh whew, man I got so scared when she hit me again there but I managed to use the healing item in time that time. Yeah okay so you get your salt back I guess so that if you're fighting a boss that you can't beat um as long as you can get them a third of their life down you can escape. Mm, mm hmm. And spend your salt. That makes sense. Okay. That's a nice little bit of mercy. I like that feature. Good job, Salt and Sanctuary. You just took her ear. You. But yeah, I took her down. She was nothing once I learned her uh, follow-up patterns. She seems to do that, like, twirly sword rush after the little sword burst projectile thing a lot. No, no, I said you took her ear, which was what made me go you. Oh, oh, yeah. Um... Yeah, we've gotten uh, an item like that from every boss so far. Huh. Or, well, we got it from the Sodden Knight. We will be getting it from the next boss. I swore his was soul or something. Ear just seems more descriptive. <laughs> it's a little more uh, visceral. I lit my torch here because I didn't know what was coming. Makes sense. I decided not to go down any side paths, but then I saw the NPC up there and figured, eh, whatever. Yeah, may as well ask. I don't have a bag of Earth, so no, I haven't seen it. Have we been here yet? I had been to this area in a previous run, so I recognized it. Gotcha. Um, but we haven't been there in this run. Mm -hmm. Hey, that guy Those dodged. slimes will drop onto your head and poison you. Quite badly. And those enemies are called Vile Hawks. They jump around and shoot arrows at you, and you can get their armor hmm. as drops from them. And it is, I believe, Tier 1 Light Armor. Might be something to look into later. Uh, we will. In fact. Hmm. I decided not to risk all the salt that I got from the boss, though. Makes sense. Leveled up a few times, and uh, took our potion upgrade, and I think I just went straight ahead and took the dagger. Class 1 Assassin. Mm -hmm. Even though in no run yet have I found a uh, uh, Class 1 Dagger, or a Class 1 Whip, but I mean, eh. You've got to at some point, I'm sure. Eh, might as well take him. They, they both um, 
if you notice, they both increase your uh, willpower, I think, which increases your stamina. Hmm. Which is always good. Yeah, there's really no reason not to if you got a chance. It's your action economy. They just cost a little extra. I think they were two pearls a piece or something, maybe. I don't know. Anyway, um... Yep, so we're back here, and I think I intended to go back and explore the area of the Village of Smiles that is to the east now, if I remember right. Hmm. Or not, actually, no, that's right, I, I uh, decided to head back to the previous... Devora bonfire. Yeah, and that trap got me. <sighs> Logs were just... They had it out for me this time. By which I mean I was a ninny. <laughs> yeah, this is maybe not your most dignified run. That's okay. It's not like traps are going to be anywhere else in the game than this village, right? Certainly not. Not in a game like this. Yeah. Although this is definitely the highest concentration of them uh, that we've seen. That's true. Was not, uh, was not effing with the dogs that time. No, clearly not. Hey, there's your otherworldly creature. Oh, and there's my salt. I don't believe we've seen that before. That giant bat is what your salt becomes if, uh... If an inanimate thing kills you. Hmm. Uh, it can poison you just like regular bats. Okay. Just very much quicker. Yeah. It, I mean, it's not super hard. Uh, you will notice that poison has been stacked on me now, and the damage is building up much quicker. Yup. I've had the damage start stacking up so quickly that I didn't even have time to drink my potion before I died in a previous run. Yikes. It was, um, it was like toxic in Dark Souls 2. Hmm. Alarmingly fast. On a whim, I decided to check our beggar friend to see if I could get the armor set from the Queen of Smiles, and, uh, lo and behold... Hmm. Charming lady. Interesting. Iker and filth. Lovely. This is all class 3 light armor, which um, we eventually might be able to equip. Um, I, I mean, I guess I'll get that far in this run. I don't know for sure. Uh, but we're going down that path. Incidentally, though, we can see that this armor is actually worse than what we've got, except that it's dark defense, or it's arcane defense, I mean, is through the roof. Okay, so I guess if we have to fight ghosts... Or something, yeah, I... I don't know how to identify arcane damage, honestly. Yeah, I'll have to look that up. I mean, it, it definitely seems to be the opposite of light or holy. I mean, I, when I, uh... We'll be getting the arcane weapon um, chant a little bit later on, in just a bit, actually. Mm -hmm. And, uh, it makes our weapon have, like, a dark, smoky aura. So I know that it's, like, I know what it looks like, but I don't know if, um, if that's a constant thing for enemy attacks that do arcane or not. Hmm. Um, yeah, so last run, well, here, here's our stone guide. So we're gonna get a guide now, and they're real handy. And then uh, I realized that I forgot to set the stone mage last session, so we're gonna do that now. And so here is our mage merchant, and we're gonna talk to her first. Nice. She has... Uh, catalysts for sale. K 
Canes, I believe, staffs, I should say. Staffs are catalysts that are more powerful than wands, but I'm thinking require two hands. So, yeah, I don't know about that. Makes sense. Hey. Charge string increases magic, but is well outside our budget right now, so forget it. And, uh, she has no stock of spells, but we've got incantations. I've been saying chance, but an incantation is a chance, so, you know, freaking sue me. Undersight, I have no idea what it does. I used it in a previous run, and it didn't seem to have any effect that I could detect. I don't know if it's like the Seek Guidance uh, miracle. Um, Wildfire's real good, and I'm going to be able to afford it at the end of this episode. But for right now, we're just going to take Arcane Weapon and then completely forget that we have it. Well, there we um, go. Yeah, I, I think I only use it on the next boss that we fight. But... Um, if you'll notice, I equipped it in an incantation slot, which are below my item slots, and if you look at the top left there, it appears right with my items. Mm -hmm. So if I were going to use it, I would just go to it and push X, and whether I have a catalyst equipped or not, it would cast it. Neat. Also, Undersight will allow you to see two invisible enemies. That's it? That's everything that's mentioned when I googled. Huh. There's also an item that will give you that effect, so you don't even need the spell. Lovely. Well, I'm glad I didn't buy it this run, then. Let's see what happens when you get to that area. Yeah, yeah, maybe I'll... Maybe I'll change my tune. Uh, we'll be upgrading our dexterity, I think. Or no, no, we'll be... I don't remember what I did, actually. Let's see what I do. Yeah, I took dexterity. Mm-hmm. That'll increase our dagger damage very slightly, um, and it'll bring us a little bit closer to tier 2 daggers, although, like I said, I've yet to see a tier 1. We'll have to forge it. Also, clearly you hit your keyboard. That pause at the blacksmith there, I actually had to quit recording for a moment, so I paused it and uh, continued. Gotcha, that's why he changed to a G. Yeah, um, it switched to uh, keyboard controls because I was fiddling with the recording settings. Mm -hmm. Pause and resume. The game switches your control notifications on the fly if you touch your keyboard or mouse while you're playing. Well, any good port will. You have no idea where you were heading right now, are you? Not a clue. Gotcha. Like I said, I, I was coming back after like a two-hour break. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, that shows what the guide does. They are fast travel. They will take you to any sanctuary you've been to. Interesting. And they also sell items that will allow you to teleport to any sanctuary where there's a guide. Hmm. With the result that I can effectively, with the use of multiple items, teleport between sanctuaries now, which is real handy. Yeah, that does sound convenient. Huh. There we see a demonstration of the effect of those spiky springboard traps. Hey, better him than you. And, uh, yeah, there's a real tricky platforming area here. Very vertical. Very tree branches, much height. Oh, please don't. Wow, fall. Ugh. They're not a huge threat if you don't let them overwhelm you. Uh, and yeah, we, we got the chef set earlier. It sucks. I think chef is the joke class. Mm -hmm. um, that That's my impression just from the description of their items and whatnot. The raptor visor we can't equip yet because it is um, tier one light armor. But we will be rectifying that very shortly. Fair enough. That fog up there mean anything or no? Nope. Okay. There's another hidden area up here, and uh, it has a thing. Yeah, a thing sounds positive. Another stone mage. And oh. then 
I deftly miss oh. every platform on my way to the ground. <laughs> yeah. I didn't expect that fall to go as long as it did. Oof. Speedrun tricks. <laughs> Got them strats. Uh, yeah. Great and name. then I promptly <laughs> get <laughs> hit by the trap because I was flustered. That's kind of how these games run. Yeah, I mean, like, this that's definitely a way in which this game is like the Souls game. It games, it absolutely punishes rushing. If you get impatient, the game will penalize you for it. Yeah, they they jump like nothing. It took me a minute to realize that was the guy jumping and not an axe thrown at you. I was just thinking, where did he have that? Yeah, yeah, they really, they kind of look like projectiles when they launch themselves like that. That looks like a really cool bow, actually. I don't know if they drop it or not. Um, it's just very thorned. Mm-hmm. You should see the, uh, the pant armor that they drop. I got that in a previous run. It has, like, raptor claw feet. Huh. Great, He's now I want cool. to do an all-Jurassic Park run of this game. <laughs> I don't know if there's a claw weapon or not. You just need a newspaper to get all the keys to open things. Is that a reference? It, it, yeah, it's a critic joke. Oh. Years before Jurassic Park 3 was a thing, they were joking about it on there. So you can't huh. lock a raptor in a closet. They're too smart. And one of them just slides a newspaper under, shakes the door a bunch until the key falls out, slides the paper back under. <laughs> <laughs> and there we get our first whip, which uh, I believe I will promptly be equipping. Those um, slimes, as we'll see a little bit later on, they have crazy physical resistance. So I'm not just casting spells on them for convenience. It's also by far the quickest way to kill them. Hmm. And here I'm just demonstrating the whip moves. The whip has no combo. Okay. Looks like it's got a decent bit of range, though. It has really good range and pretty decent attack speed. And the strong attack that goes way overhead has a really big vertical reach as well as horizontal. So... It's definitely got some advantages, and it's the weapon that I will be using with my catalyst. Hmm. That way, when I'm using a shield, I'll be able to uh, parry and riposte with my dagger. Nice. Okay. And there's a stone cell sword, which we could have started with as an effects item, but which I didn't do. Um, and here, I, in uh, anticipation of being able to equip that helmet, I decided to come back and level up a bit. Makes sense. The chef equipment sucks. Terrible scaling and terrible damage. Look, every game needs a Dan Hibiki. The peasant equipment has terrible damage, but S scaling. Like I said. And uh, yeah, I just upgraded the bullwhip because I knew I'd be using it a bit. Um, yeah, it serves me pretty well. Hey, sometimes, you know, you want to make sure everything works. I don't know where that buckler came from. Um, I like, think you had it last radio. Did I? I, I, I don't check. remember. Yeah, I don't remember picking it up. <laughs> I have no idea where it came from. Um, but it, it says in the description that it's good at parrying, and I kind of like tested a little bit here to see if there was any difference in the animations between it and the heater shield, and I couldn't find any, but I equipped it anyway. Mm -hmm. Cause it may be that just in the frame data, and not so much in the animation, there's a difference. Also, I equipped that mossy charm that I found. It's that little green glowing thing on my dagger, and it makes my attack speed faster. Yeah, I noticed. Good lord. 
Yeah, which for a dagger is real nice. I, I mean, I can just, like, slash people up now. Yeah, it, it doesn't really look like the... It doesn't look like the buckler parries any faster, but there may be more active frames on it than on the heater shield. I don't know. So you're now, like, one skill away from being a Dissidia character. Congrats. I know what Dissidia is, but I'm not sure what that reference meant there. Uh, all of the Final Fantasy characters who appear in said game basically get ludicrous new skills. Like, everyone can fly. Um, this is like, yeah, you, you know, now that you have quick attacks, magic shooting out your fingers, and a variety of weapons at your disposal. Oh. Uh. Yeah, Rydia wasn't in the Dissidia games, but she'd have been really cool if she was. I thought she was in one of them. Oh, was she? I uh, I don't know. Like I I never had a system that would play those games. I've always wanted to play them because they sounded neat and uh, especially Kefka. Yeah, let me double check. Uh, I've read uh, I've read stuff about his character in Dissidia, and he's got lots of like crazy mix-up moves and. Uh, difficult to read animations. More than a few of them have some pretty crazy stuff. Yeah, which is what I tend to play in uh, games like that. Here's the raptor mask that we got earlier. It's um exactly what it says on the tin. It's a raptor mask. Pretty cool. Hmm. That's not pretty cool. Hmm. Watch Todd get hit by simple, predictable traps for an hour. <laughs> it's alright, there's only 20 minutes left of those. Also, you're right, she is not even in the new arcade one. Never mind. I think I was confusing her with Terra. I'm not happy to be right. Yeah, Terra's definitely in them. I think she was in the first one. Probably, but to be fair, I've mostly been following the new one because Ramza. I'm so good at this game. Eh. <laughs> At least it's only 355. Really, I should start tallying up how much gold you're losing doing this. That's the real rub there. That's what was starting to get to me was the gold loss. Yeah. Because I knew what I was heading for here. We're back to not blind stuff. And I actually do have a specific goal here. Um, with regard to beating a boss... And getting enough gold. I'm demonstrating the parry here, because I haven't used it yet in this run, I don't think. But it's pretty nice. Yeah. Hey, convenient skills. It's a bat. Now it's a dead bat. Rydia's definitely still not at her best when using this dagger, even though it's really fast. Well, you know, you're going to get better daggers. Unless we really screw up. Well, yeah, but also my dex is still really low. Well, see, there you go. You got excuses for everything. Mm-hmm. Not quite close enough. They drop some pants. Rydia needs pants, too. <laughs> yeah. No, the, I didn't get those this run, unfortunately. That was in a previous run that I that I got them. I know, but Rydia still needs pants. Well, I mean, she's wearing pants now. She's wearing the Acolyte's boots. I'm not saying she's, you know, pantsless. I'm just saying sometimes you need new pants. She needs more stylish pants. I always feel good buying a pair of new pants. So do enemies take fall damage? Um, enemies do take fall damage, although I don't think he took it then. Later on, there is a spot where I noticed myself getting some salt. And yeah, here's a big fella. Um, I decided to try and see if he could be parried. How'd that work? <laughs> yeah, I'm, uh, I'm gonna call this a rousing failure. I don't think he can be parried. No! Oh, oh. Because <sighs> I know I timed that last one right. Uh, if he can be parried, the timing is really hard. 
And that enemy is called Bloated Monstrosity. Well, that explains his sprite. What you read is what you get? I guess. Hey, watch me not get hit by the trap! Woohoo! It's a miracle! Alright, let's see if you skip the second one. Oh, that, that second one hits the enemy more often than not. I think it only killed me that one time. I'm just saying. Uh, that it hit me. I'm placing a bet in my head on whether it hits you or him. Oh, neither. I lost. Well, that poor sod. He just tried to walk away from you and he's dead. I really wanted it to hit him. <laughs> I decided to no! go, go for that item. Yeah, amazingly, I didn't die. I kept my head and got that skull bat wing, which is a, it's an ear, effectively. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I didn't die. Woo! I'm kind of amazed. Me too. <laughs> I mean, considering how this run has gone so far. <laughs> yeah. I died once last run, and what's the count here? I haven't really been keeping track, but it's at least ten. We're around seven or eight. Seven or eight? All right. It'll we'll get to ten before the end. Never you, never you fear. <laughs> yeah, we had, we've had at least three bat creatures, th two deaths to the Queen of Smiles, one bloated monstrosity. Um, the two at the start. Crap, I forgot those. Uh, you can see the crazy physical resistance those things have right there. My wit did two damage to it. Yikes. Alright, yeah, you're right. We are probably at the ten range already. Look at my soul. Yep. Yeah, that guy's so, gone. Yeah, enemies can die from falls. Uh, I don't know if they die from strict fall damage or just falling into the kill box at the bottom of the screen, because that is a thing as well. I was just waiting for him to start an attack animation so I could safely roll through him, and then I was taking no chances. Mm -hmm. Look how long this takes, though. That guy has a lot of HP. Bloated indeed. Also, maybe it's just his size, but man, his animations look super janky, even by the weird model physics of this game. Yeah, it really does. Uh, some very, uh, Jacob's Laddery <laughs> stuff. Yeah, very, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Low, low frame. Yeah, so here's a, here's a faith that we could join if we wanted to. I don't think I want to. Mm-hmm. I'm doing all right as a uh, as a Devara right now, uh, but we'll be seeing some new healing items in a second. And you know, this creep is talking about poison like it's the best thing since sliced poison. Look, sometimes I just want poison in my games. I, what was I doing here? Oh, maybe you know what? I think this is actually where I uh, paused and where returned. I quit for yeah. a bit. Yeah, yeah, the animation skipped there. I, nothing was missed there. I just I had to do some stuff. Is all. Yep, I didn't want to become an apostate because that sounds like it has consequences. So I decided not to do it right now. Hey, you're right. It does. Uh, and just leveled up instead. Wasn't sure what to take here at first, so I ended up going with the poultice pouch. That yeah, makes sense. Eh, nice to have six healing items, even, you know, though I'm not going to be using them against, like, a boss or anything. It definitely increases the amount of time I can spend in a single run. So I noticed you got grass from that shrine instead of your usual. Yeah. So it actually changes what you get restocked based on whose shrine it is? That's correct. Yep. Neat. 
Yep, and um, I don't know what what distinguishes the grass from the other ones, but it's red red grass and blue grass for this one. Well, now I'm looking this up. Yep, and this uh, yep, that guy just straight poisoned me, and that was that. So I decided to <laughs> say forget him. Uh, and there's a funny thing here. I just picked up a chest full of leather armor, and take a look at this. I was like, oh, leather armor, sweet. I can equip that. I'm a light armor user. Where is it? Hmm. Leather is heavy armor in this game. Well, that's a new one. Yeah. <laughs> eh. So yeah, leather leather armor is heavy armor in this game. Uh, I will not be using it. Or even seeing what it looks like. Oh yeah, incidentally, look at the fire defense on that blacksmith's armor. Well, that makes perfect hundred. sense. Well, yeah, I mean that's that's like what it is, but still, who if I if I have to fight a fire boss, I might very well wear that. Oh, interesting. I didn't know that the stuff that the shopkeepers sell varied based on what faction shrine you put them down in. Oh, interesting. Yep. Also, a red grass is slower than other healing items, but has a longer regen period. Oh, alright. Whatever. Doesn't make much of a difference, uh, you know, for purposes of this boss right here, who is the Mad Alchemist, and has a bird mask like an old Plague Doctor. Because that apparently is the universal game language for Alchemist now, a la Plague Knight from... Uh, Shovel Knight. This guy is aware that you don't cast alchemy by punching people in the face, right? Uh, and he kind of wrecked me with that double lightning thing there. Yeah, well. I'd fought this boss in a previous run and beat him and... didn't remember him being able to kill me quite that fast, but I don't think he ever did that lightning attack twice in a row. That was pretty vicious. That does seem a little cruel. I learned for the next run, though. Yep. I hope. Something else will kill me this time. Well, you just gotta get him down enough to get your soul. Mm-hmm. That I did manage. Oh, good. Oh. I wonder what poisons me here. Because I, I remember I died from poison this time. Uh, you're standing up, Far Cloud. Oh, okay, that'll do it. Yeah. I was a little bit too busy aiming lightning bolts at him to pay attention. Holy crap, that stacks. Oh, okay, it's it's not one of those every second, it's just that's the total damage. Gotcha. Yeah, but even so, that's some fast poison there. Yup. I used an antidote and a blue grass. Ha, <laughs> blue grass. <laughs> nice. Sorry. I'm sorry, um, looking this up gave me red, white, and blue grass instead of salt and sanctuary, so. I actually like blue grass. I got nothing against it. Ugh, and I died again. That purple attack is definitely his most dangerous one. It has deceptive range. Hmm. I think I only died twice on him, so I should beat him this time. I am definitely starting a death counter next video just because of our disagreement over how many times you've croaked. <laughs> it probably would be funny. Maybe we can have like a little graphical dongle for it in the bottom right. There we go. Since nothing else is there. I, uh, I figured I would just have fun like attacking this guy for a little bit to see how well it did. <laughs> it, it didn't do well. Um, and, and I stopped. <laughs> Seemed to me like he died quicker that time. I wonder if salt powers the enemies up. Uh, it's possible. It seems to power up the bats. Uh, you have invincibility frames during the climb up animation, incidentally. Hmm. Uh, so that's what I took advantage of there to dodge that attack of his. That explains that. If only that were abusable in a boss fight. 
Yeah, here I remember Arcane Weapon, so I used it at the beginning of this fight to see if I could deal some extra slash damage to him. And now that I'm remembering, I think I actually did die this time too, but we'll see! Excitement! <laughs> and, uh, that actually is taking down his life pretty quick now that I look at it, so yeah, there's, um... Oh! Look at that! I switched weapons, but my arcane stayed. That's actually kind of cool. Neat. You should maybe run. I, I, I know I'm telling this to you that it's a recording that's already happened, but... And I got myself poisoned again there. I believe I managed to cure it. I don't remember if I died again or not. Mm, we'll yeah, see. It looks like when the slimes first get summoned, they give off fart gas. Yeah. A lot of it. Yes. Enough to stack poison several times, it looks like. Well, you know. I think I beat him this time. I hope, given how this is going. Oh, good. That's him frozen up, not you. Oh, yeah, yeah. And we got a Mad Alchemist Seer and 4,000 gold, which is enough to get us a uh, wildfire. Woohoo! And we get a Black Pearl, which is always a nice bonus, and a Mossy Key, which I believe will get us through the locked door past that sanctuary that we were in a moment ago. Hmm. We're not going to go there this run, though. We're getting pretty close to the end here. The Calling Horn is the item that will take you to any sanctuary that has a guide in it, which right now is Bandit's Pass. I was a little uncertain what I wanted to level up this time. I could take uh, level 2 Assassin, but there's no real reason to. Same with the Hunter, there's no real reason to take that, because I don't have access to any of the weapons it would let me equip. No. Here's the thing, with you going blind, it also leaves us going, when are we going to need this one? Huh, now that I'm looking at it, I should have gone toward the file sleeve, because I'm actually using enough magic now that uh, that would be kind of <laughs> handy. Yep. But the extra stamina is also not a bad choice. Oh yeah, and the magic upgrade is, is pretty good too. I'm certainly not upset about anything that I took. Good. And a little extra dexterity to just squeeze a little more damage out of those attacks. I'm sure eventually you'll start using them, just not on bosses. Lightning's pretty good. It's true. Couldn't... Oh yeah, that's right, I decided to upgrade this Dirk, even though chances are I'll be finding something better sooner or later. I, um, I figured since I was using it so much, I might as well get another damage point or two out of it. You may as well. It's not like it's a big investment. Nearly tripling its damage is not a bad thing. Hmm? Tripling its damage? Compared to where it started? I don't think so. It is entirely possible my screen has given me the wrong numbers. Oh, I, it increased the base damage by 0 0.2 when I looked at it, but I just bought Wildfire, and that's going to make the dagger irrelevant, as we're going to see in a moment. All right. Um, yeah, yeah, Wildfire is... is um. Just look. <laughs> Let's see here. <laughs> it's, um... Uh, Ooh, that's pretty good. Oh, yeah. So, uh, we're coming full circle now, and I will be getting my revenge against this area <laughs> that caused me so much grief at the start of this episode. That seems like a good way to do it. It's also got a decent vertical spread. Uh, yeah, you could say that. I'll take a look when I do it on the top level. Ooh, oh, man. It's nice! Yeah, that's pretty potent. 
Doesn't leave any burn damage, but still, jeez. Doesn't need it. Yep. And then you can just get hammered out of the air by some dick with a pickaxe. Yep, he, he <laughs> put up a brave fight. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I love how this one dude is continually thwarting your attempts to do anything to him. No. <laughs> I saw you coming. He turned me into a scrub there for a minute. <laughs> I can get a lot of casts out of it, too. Yeah. That did go for a while before you had to use a single magic back file. That's what the word is. You know, your magic backers. Yep. It looks to me like the Cloth of Blessing actually restores a little bit less than the Spiced Mead. Hmm. I mean, it's possible. Well, I don't know. I, uh, think this is where I made an end of it. Oh, right, I wanted to look at, uh, I, I thought about unequipping my Link of Fire and Sky to demonstrate the magic balance feature now, because I have a fire spell that I actually want to use as well as a lightning spell, mm -hmm. but I, uh, decided to save it for next time. All right, we'll have to do that soon. Yeah, we'll be looking at that mechanic probably at the beginning of next video. And that will be it for this episode. Thank you for joining us. And remember, don't get salty. I can tell you want to hit me right now.